This week we're in Pawtucket, Rhode Island checking out Foolproof Brewing Company. They're brewing up an awesome batch of beer. They're going to take us out on the floor, so let's go check it out. My name is Nick Garrison. I am the president and founder of Foolproof Brewing Company. Well, Foolproof is the result of a, a dream slash crazy idea I had about making beer for a living. Uh, I got into beer when I started home brewing, like most people in the industry, uh, back in 2007. What started as a hobby quickly spiraled into an obsession. Uh, I had recently moved to Rhode Island and saw that at the time there actually wasn't a lot of craft breweries in the state, so I saw a real opportunity there. I brewed all the beer for my own wedding. My wife and I talked about uh, this idea of owning our brewery, and that was uh, when I knew foolproof was eventually going to become a reality. So it took about four years to put the whole thing together. Um, you know, I had to get the right team in place, find the right property, the equipment, but it all came together and we opened our doors for business in January of last year. Our logo, the gesture is all about having fun, having a good time, which is ultimately why people drink beer. So that's the fool, the proof is the alcohol, you put them together, you get foolproof, a nice positive word. So that's the, that's the journey we went through with our name. Uh, right now we have uh, five beers that are, are actively pouring. We've got our Barstool Gold Nail, it's our lightest beer. Uh, we have Backyard IPA, that's our best seller. We have a delicious porter called Rain Cloud. Uh, and then we have two uh, higher alcohol specialty beers. One is La Ferme Urbaine, or LFU for short, that's our farmhouse sale. Uh, and our newest beer is our double IPA called King of the Yard, which is like the big brother to uh, the regular Backyard IPA. We also have a Russian Imperial Stout that comes out in the winter called Reverie. Yeah, when we um, opened Foolproof, uh, I, you know, I, I really wanted us to think differently about beer. Uh, so what we, we have what we call an experience-based brewing philosophy. And what that means is every time we brew a beer, uh, it's really brewed in tribute to a, a, a sacred beer drinking experience, if you will. So. Um, if you look at Barstool, for example, it's designed for a night out with your friends, you know, hang out at a pub, sitting on a bar stool. Uh, we've got Backyard IPA, which is kind of the quintessential New England barbecuing beer. Uh, Rain Cloud is our, our rainy day porter, uh, kind of day where you don't want to leave your house because it's raining or snowing outside. Uh, and then LFU, the farmhouse ale, is uh, that post-workday beer. So uh, that's how we think about beers here at Foolproof, and we think it sets us apart a little bit from other breweries. I think the fact that I feel I'm a balanced person is where the balance of the beer comes from. Our higher alcohol beers, I like to hide the alcohol. I don't want the alcohol to be a high presence in it. If I'm making the Imperial IPA, yes, I want it to be very hoppy, but I want it to have a good malt background to counter the hops. So I think I like to think of myself as a balanced individual. I like to think of my beer as balanced as well. We have a 30 barrel brew house, so which is 930 gallons per batch with um, both the kettle and the mash tun. Then we'll have four 30 barrel fermenters and a 30 barrel bright tank. The bright tank is where the beer goes after it's done fermenting while it gets carbonated. We also have two 60 barrel fermenters where we'll double batch into and a six barrel bright. Their foolproof beer is the IPA, Backyard. It's a standard beer. It's always in my fridge at home. It's a great, for me, easy drinking beer. So I'm brewing the uh, Backyard IPA today. So uh, first thing this morning, we uh, set up about 44 ba bags of grain. It's uh, a little over 2,000 pounds. Milled that in to our mash tun that we're standing next to. Uh, that grain sits in uh, some hot water. It steeps like a tea. It allows the enzymes that are in there to uh, turn the starches into sugars. Uh, and we collect that sugar water into the kettle behind me. We'll keep on adding more hot water and collecting the, the, uh, that hot wort until we have 33 barrels in the kettle. Uh, and then we're going to boil that and add our hops at different periods throughout to uh, make our, the flavor that we're looking for in our IPA. Uh, the grain is primarily uh, just a two-row. That's the base of most beers that we use. Uh, and then from there we add some uh, wheat, uh, some cara held to give the particular char characteristics for this beer. Uh, we're going to use uh, Cascade hops, Zythos, uh, Nugget. Uh, all throughout the different parts of the boil to give a different amount of bitterness and then also the flavor that we get later on. Uh, hops, that get, hops that get added early to the boil will give more bitterness to it. Hops that get added later in the boil are going to give more aroma and then flavor. Uh, so we've already added some hops right before when we started collecting. 
Those are going to start the bitterness process, uh, and as we get closer to the finish of the boil, we'll add more hops that are going to give us the, the flavors and the aromas that we want. Yeah, canning is, is a growing trend in the craft industry, and a lot of people don't realize that cans are actually very good for beer. We're canning Barstool Golden Ale. We've um, probably our flagship beer, not necessarily the most popular, but it's our flagship beer. It's a nice, light, pilsner s type beer. The cans are coming in to my left and going down, being filled. First purge with uh, CO2, filled with uh, beer. The lid gets placed on it, and then it goes right through the chuck. Beer cans, because they're made out of aluminum, are uh, opaque, so that means no sun, sunlight penetrates the vessel, uh, and sunlight plus beer equals very bad things. Uh, cans also uh, have very low head space in them, so what that means is there's not a lot of oxygen in the container, and oxygen uh, is actually going to decrease the shelf life of beer, so uh, cans uh, help prevent that as well. The craft beer community is unbelievable. It's fantastic, and I don't think uh, you could find a more collaborative, collaborative and amicable industry out there. It's specifically Rhode Island. It's a great group. I'm in touch with Derek from Newport Storm. He's actually going to give me some training on how to use a filter. Uh, we communicate and we're back and forth with each other as brewers, and also the company itself. Um, we'll talk with the other you know, high-level stuff where it's very, everyone really works well together, and I think that's a great thing. And in general, with the craft brew community, I mean, we're all competing against each other. We all realize that. But at the same time, a rising tide is going to raise all ships. We've just seen a, a record number of breweries opening up here in the Ocean State, which I think is, is fantastic for uh, the beer scene here. Um, you know, Rhode Island is known for having such terrific food. Uh, and, and now we have, you know, even more terrific beer coming into the scene. So uh, I think it's a very exciting time to be a Rhode Island beer lover. Sure, yeah, we have a, a fantastic team here at Foolproof. It's just a, a, almost like a family, you know, a family away from the family. We try to keep it light, but at the same time, we know we've got a lot of beer to move out, and that's a good thing. I mean, we're, we're really ambitious when it comes to what we want Foolproof to become one day. Uh, right now, we're, we're a relatively small brewery. We're in three states, but we definitely want to see Foolproof grow into a regional brewery, uh, a national, and eventually maybe even an inter international brewery. I think craft brewing is a little bit of an art and a science. Uh, I mean, on the science side, our brewmaster is a chemist by trade. Um, you know, that, that's his the scientific background, and you absolutely need to have that foundation of science, you know, that, that brewing knowledge. It is probably more of an art, but there's definitely a science involved in it. The art part is the creativity aspect, coming out with new recipes, trying new things. The science is the backbone of all the beers, because you want to keep a beer consistent. If you're constantly having a beer come out which has off flavors and stuff like that, you really, the consumer will notice. And when the consumer notices, they no longer buy your beer. They no longer buy your beer, you're no longer able to keep your art up. And that's what it comes down to. I mean, I think anyone who works in this industry has a passion for beer. Now I've got a job, you know, even on the worst day, I go home, well, I'll make beer. Hey, I transferred beer today. You actually, you see the process being done. And it's just, it's just, for me, very satisfying. We love what we do, and we're not the only ones. All breweries get in the business of brewing beer for people because they love brewing beer. And that passion stems right from there, that, that love of creating something unique, delicious, and something that you want to share with people. Uh, you know, we don't make a ton of money in craft beer, but we all get to do what we love, and that's a very special thing. Uh, and it's something that not everyone in this world gets to do. So we feel very honored and humbled to be able to come in here every day, brew beer, sell beer, uh, and work together uh, under a single unified passion. I never thought it would ever be anything like this. And that's it for this week here at American Brewed. We'd like to say thank you to Nick and everybody here at Foolproof who showed us around. We've had a great time. Stay tuned for next week when we have another awesome brewery to show you. Until then, take care.